Hey guys, welcome to Practical Home Projects. Recently, I changed out my old electrical panel with a new larger one, and I'd like to walk through that process with you, and hopefully you can gain some valuable insights if you decide to take on this project yourself. Of course, this is a little bit more of an advanced electrical project. You're gonna to wanna to know a little bit more about your electrical system at home and some of the codes in your area. If you're just looking for an electrical panel one-on-one -on -one type of video, we've got one of those for you up here. And then of course, before you start your project, realize that when we did this, all I had was the layout that we have, and of course, a geographic location that I'm in. So you'll have to check your local jurisdiction to know exactly what codes apply to you. You'll contact your local power company to see if they have any specific rules. And then of course, if your panel situation is different, make sure to take that into account. There are a few reasons that you might need to change out your main panel. So if your panel is really old and kind of is malfunctioning or just doesn't meet today's safety codes, you might want to change it out. If your old panel isn't sized up enough in terms of power, for example, if you have a 60 amp or 100 amp panel, you might want to upgrade it to a 200 amp panel just to allow it up to power to your house. And then number three, and actually the reason that we had to change out our panel, is that it just doesn't have enough physical spaces for all the circuits that you need. So we changed out a 200 amp panel with 20 spaces for a 200 amp panel with 40 spaces, so that now we have enough space to put all the new circuits that we need. The stakes in this project are pretty high, so proper planning is crucial. Before you even touch your main panel, the first thing you want to do is call your local power company and your local jurisdiction to find out if homeowners are even allowed to work in the main panel or change out the main panel. And then after that, find out exactly what special procedures you need to take in communicating with them to get the project done. If your plans involve increasing the amperage capacity of your main panel, then you have the extra consideration of making sure that your main service lines are up to the capacity of your new panel. So you'll contact your power company and they'll have to make that change themselves since those lines belong to the city. And then hopefully you can coordinate that change out with the change out of your main panel so you only have the power shut off one time. Since you probably want to be without power for the smallest amount of time possible, there's a few things that you can do before you even disconnect your original panel. So the first is of course you can go ahead and buy all of your supplies and have them all ready with you ahead of time. I would recommend getting a couple extra clamps, screws, breakers, um, just in case you have an issue with the ones that you have or if, you know, you miscounted. The second thing you can do is you can go ahead and set up your grounding system. So our house was originally built back in the 60s, so they had different grounding systems back then. Um, so we actually had to install some new grounding rods and then make sure that all the metal pipes in your house are grounded. So if you have copper pipes, galvanized steel pipes, make sure those are all attached to your grounding system. And then the third one is just go ahead and label all of your breakers and your wires so that whenever you do the disconnect, it's a lot faster to reconnect everything afterward. If you're planning to move your main panel, then you'll likely need new feeder lines as well as having to modify the majority of your circuits, which is a pretty major undertaking. However, even if you're going to keep your panel in the same location essentially, there's a few considerations to take into account. So if your panel is interior like ours, then you'll have to think about the studs and the joists that it kind of interacts with, as well as any utility lines that might be in the way. If your panel is outside, then you'll have sort of the same considerations, except you'll also be thinking about the siding, as well as making sure that you can keep that entire uh, box encapsulated properly. Um, when you're buying a new panel, think about where all the wires are going to be coming out of the box. For example, ours had a limited number of options for the ports at the top and the bottom, so we ended up using out, uh, ports out the side to finish up all the rest of the circuits that we needed. And then when you're installing your final panel, uh, one code requirement that you want to keep in mind is that the tallest breaker on your panel can be no more than six foot seven inches off the ground, so there's no putting it all the way up against the ceiling. Um, so kind of take that into account as well. So now that you've got all your permits, you've done all your prep work, it's time to go ahead and get your power shut off at the meter. And we do that just so that it de-energizes your main feeder line. So now your entire panel is without electricity. And then you can just start disconnecting stuff. So disconnect all your breakers, disconnect all your clamps. And I try to pull things out and make sure that the wires themselves are labeled so that it'll be easy to reconnect everything. Once you have all of your wires disconnected and your breakers set aside, you can go ahead and remove that old panel. So you'll want to sort of inspect all the studs, or if it's exterior, you'll want to inspect the backing to make sure it's appropriate for your new panel. If not, you might need some additional blocking work, or you might need to do some sort of additional work to your siding to accommodate that new panel. Before even installing the new panel, I like to go ahead and remove a couple of these knockouts, and then I installed some of these clamps ahead of time, and that really just made things easier later. I also installed this lug to attach our extra grounding rods, and then I installed this green grounding screw which attaches the ground bus to the main panel.
Most modern panels can be installed with the main breaker either at the bottom or at the top. The main code requirement that you need to look out for is if there are any breakers that flip up and down, then up always means on and down always means off. So since these breakers are all sideways, that makes it reversible, so you can flip the breaker at the top or the bottom. Um, you'll also notice that your panel will have a number of holes for you to mount it in a number of different ways. Now the panel doesn't come with its own screws. I always like to use button head screws because they're nice and grabby. And then of course since I'm installing it in a stud bay, I'm using the holes on the sides to attach ours. Once your panel is fully secured, it's time to go ahead and start routing those wires in. I like to start with the largest cables. So those will be your feeder lines to so go ahead and get those situated, get them clamped in and attached. Then I start with the next biggest wire. So I'll start with my six gauge wires, for example, and go ahead and get both the neutral, the ground, and the breaker installed. Now it's important as you're installing the breakers to make sure to balance the load. So you'll have your A phase and your B phase and make sure not to put too much current on one of those phases or you could end up having you know, current go through your ground wire or your neutral wire. At this point, you've already got all of the breakers installed for all of the circuits that you already know you're going to need. Um, something you can also do is go ahead and install the conduit or the cable for any future circuits you think you might need. So I've already gone ahead and I've run this 12 gauge wire for potential future circuits. So this could end up being for a dehumidifier, this could be for some outlets or something. Um, and I don't need it yet, so I'm not going to install a breaker. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put a cap on the neutral and the hot wire, and then this ground wire does need to be grounded, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten that to the ground bar. And then of course this wire is going to run down to my crawl space, and then I have a mock-up of what that's going to look like. I'm going to run it into a metal junction box. So in this junction box, you'll see we use a regular clamp, and then the cable runs in, you'll see that I have a green grounding screw where the grounding wire is attached, and then of course it's still available here for us to complete the circuit. And then I went ahead and capped off the neutral and the hot screw, the neutral and the hot wire just like you would in the main panel. So then of course I'll put a cover on this and it'll be ready to go in the future. Now you've, you're pretty much wrapped up, but there's one more thing you have to do, and if you don't, then you'll totally fail your inspection. So you just made a bunch of penetrations into your crawl space, into your attic, maybe in other parts of your house, and you need to close those penetrations to prevent the flow of fire. So I use something very simple called fire block spray foam. Um, this is an orange foam, it comes in a couple different brands. And all you have to do is spray a little bit of this into every penetration that you just made, um, and any, any cracks you see. And this is a code requirement to basically prevent the uh, flow of fire or prevent the flow of oxygen to a fire on various levels. So you'll hit your attic holes, you'll hit your crawl space holes, um, and then any other four floor penetrations. We installed a 1x4 board as an anchor point for us to secure all of our cables and the conduit. With that all in place, you're ready for your rough-in inspection. So call the inspector over, he'll basically just check the layout. Once you get his okay, he'll call the power company, and then you'll have the power company come and turn your power back on. We only had to wait a couple of hours to get the power turned back on for the house. And then you can start flipping your breakers on. I like to do all my breakers off and then flip the main breaker on and then flip them all on one at a time so that if there is any short, then you kind of catch it on exactly where it happened instead of it being a mystery. With your power back on, you now have the luxury of time to go ahead and finish all your touch-up work. So if you're like me and you have an internal panel, you can go ahead and install the drywall. If you have an external panel, you might have a little bit more finishing work to do there. Um, but that's pretty much it. So we really appreciate you guys following all the way through this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave that down below. And then of course, always like and subscribe if you like what you saw. We'll try to get more stuff out to you in the future. Thanks guys.